Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to install Windows 2016 on top of Oracle VirtualBox, which is running on a Windows 10 machine. For this, you'll need Oracle VirtualBox already installed, and your computer needs at least 4 gigs of memory. Alright, let's get going. So first, a quick background. Most computers that you use have an operating system like Windows or Mac OS on a piece of computer hardware. Computer hardware. With a virtual machine, you're going to install your operating system on top of another piece of software or code and that software is pretending to be hardware. So you'll end up with something that looks like this, an operating system inside of another operating system that looks and feels as if it were on a piece of hardware. For all intents and purposes, they are going to be the same. So why would you want to do this? Well, for one, it is really, really fast to install a virtual machine. You can get one installed in 15 minutes, whereas for a real, actual piece of hardware, if you want to install an operating system on that, you could be unboxing, physically putting it into place, hooking up wires. That might take two or three hours. Two, you can use these machines to learn and to test. So in this little video, I'm downloading test viruses onto my virtual machine, which I would never want to do on a machine that was actually important. There are other reasons as well, probably more relevant if you're a company instead of an individual person. But for now, using a virtual machine is a really fast way to test and to learn. So first, I need an operating system to install. So the first thing we're going to do is download the Windows 2022 server ISO. I'm going to open up my browser, and I'm going to search for Windows 2022 server evaluation download. That's Windows 2022 server evaluation download. So it will be the first link that comes up. This will take me to the Microsoft website. On the Microsoft website, I'm going to select download the ISO. And click continue. For this page, I'm going to put some fake information here because I don't want junk emails. I will uncheck this box and then click continue. For the language, I'm going to select English and then I'm going to click download. And now I have to wait. Okay, now we're ready to install Windows 2022 Server on Oracle VirtualBox. So I'll start up Oracle VirtualBox. And I'm going to make a new virtual machine. To do that, I'll click New. I'll give it a name. You should give it a name that makes sense. Don't give it like my VM or whatever. Give it a name that tells you what it is. In this case, it's a Windows 2022 Server. In this version field, I'm going to pick Windows 2019 64-bit. They don't have Windows 2022 yet, so Windows 2019 will have to be good enough. For everything else, I'm just going to take the defaults. So the memory size, the hard disk size, the file type, the location, all of these will just be defaults. So the next thing I'm going to do is put in the Windows 2022 ISO. So to do that, I right-click on my virtual machine, and I go to Settings. On the left side, I go to Storage. I select the empty DVD. And on the right side, where the DVD pull-down is, I'm going to click on that, select Choose a Disk File, and then select the DVD ISO that I just downloaded. And then I'll click OK. So now the DVD is in, and I'm going to press Start. This basically turns on my machine. So I'll select my machine now. And you're going to get these messages at the top. You can X out of them. They're not important. I just X out of two of them now. OK, so this is the language. For me, it's English. So I'm going to leave all these defaults and click Next, and then click Install Now. OK, so this is really important. Here I'm choosing which operating system I want to install. I really need to pick the second one. If I don't pick the second one here, it's going to install Windows without any Windows. So nothing graphical. It's going to look like I'm showing you here on the screen. That is not what you want. So be sure, be sure that you install the second one. When you get to the screen, accept the license terms. So click the checkbox and then click Next. At this screen, select Custom. 
If you select Upgrade, it will start you all over. So be sure to select Custom. Just pick the default disk to install to and then click Next. And now you have to wait for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. The computer will reboot all by itself. Again, I'm just getting rid of these messages at the top. More rebooting. Do not press anything here. Do not press. All right, so here it's going to want my password that I'm going to use. So I'm going to pick a password of I, love this class, capital I, love this class, one, two, three, dollar sign. The one, two, three, dollar sign is what makes it secure because it has numbers and characters. All right, now I'm ready to go. You might notice on the screen it says press, control, alt, delete to unlock. So the way you do that in a VM is you go at the top, input. And then you go input, keyboard, insert, control, alt, delete. So it's up there is where you need to do it. So again, input, keyboard, insert, control, alt, delete. So now I'm at the login screen. I'll type in my password. Okay, so it's going to take me to this network screen. Do you want to allow your PC to be discoverable by other PCs? Because this is a test machine, it is okay to click yes. So I'll click yes. The first thing that's going to happen is that Windows will bring up Server Manager. So we're going to edit Server Manager to allow us to download things much, much easier. This pop-up will come up. I can close this pop-up, which I'm going to do. So here I want to go local server on the left side, local server. On the right side, IE enhanced security configuration. I'm going to click on it. Right now it says on, but I want to turn these all off. So for administrators off, for users off, and click OK. Then I'm going to close the server manager and reopen it up just to be sure that this is set correctly. So in the search bar, I'll type server manager. Click on it, and be sure that my setting for IE Enhanced Security is off. I can close this window, no problem. So again, local server, IE Enhanced Security configuration, and it's off, so that's good. Now I can close this. The next thing I'm going to do is install VirtualBox Guest Editions. So the way I do that is I go to Devices, and I select Insert Guest Editions CD Image. After that, I'll go to the File Explorer. And from there, I can click on it directly if I want to, but here I'm going to click on this PC. I'm going to click on the CD drive VirtualBox Guest Editions. I will select the AMD64 executable. So from here, I'm going to take all the defaults. Next, 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 install. And then I'll reboot. And this will take some time to come up. To log in, again, input, keyboard, insert, control, alt, delete. I'm going to type in my password I, love this class, one, two, three, dollar sign. So I want to show you what installing Server Manager can do. It allows me to make my virtual machine take up the entire screen. The other thing it's going to let me do is copy and paste between my host, so that's my main machine, and my VM. So I'll double click on Oracle VirtualBox, then I'll right click on my VM, select Settings, on the left side I'll click General, in the middle I'll click the Advanced tab, and for shared clipboard and for drag and drop, I'll select bidirectional for both and click OK. And so if I have a text file on my desktop which says hello, I can drag and drop that into my virtual machine just like so. And you can see that I'm able to drag and drop between the host and the virtual machine.
The last thing I'm going to show is networking. So if I double click Oracle VirtualBox VM, right click on my VM, go to settings, go to network. By default, it's NAT. NAT can see the outside world, but at the same time, the outside world is a little bit protected from me, and I'm a little bit protected from the outside world. If I select internal, I'm not going to be able to see the outside world for my VM, and the VM is not going to be able to see the outside world either. So if I want something that's contained and I want it to be safe, so for instance, a DHCP server, then I might select internal. If I select bridged here, my IP address will be in the same range as my host. So for all intents and purposes, it's on the same network as my host. If this was useful to you, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.